You join me in Aberystwyth um, for a very momentous day. There has been a very special collection caper, one which has been ongoing a little more than I would like, to be honest, but we're getting closer now. Um, I mean, I, I've owned probably over 70 cars now. I've very slightly lost track. I might well be exceeding that. Um, and every now and then there's one that you think once wasn't enough. I would like to own that car again. And uh, that's the case with this one. And uh, I, I think Titch thinks the camera lady has food the way she's moving at the moment. But yeah, we, we're just back from Southampton where we um, collected the car. It um, has been a long day for these poor dogs. Um, Diego, I'm not letting you pee on that. But uh, yeah, the, the, the momentous news is almost upon us. Because over here is a car you might just recognize. Oh yes, it's Betty. Betty's back. Betty has made it all the way from New Zealand and is now UK legal. She has a UK number plate and uh, more importantly has survived her first long trip on UK roads. Uh, today driving from Southampton to Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth mentioned on the shirts when these first came out but of course it must be pointed out I had no idea back then that this would ever happen that uh, betty would actually make it to aberystwyth i might have had the dream the dog is now hiding under the engine bay for reasons unknown but uh, i never thought it would become a reality so uh let's talk a bit more about how it happened and why so the story of betty begins for me at least in november 2019 when i bought this car in auckland new zealand and then took her on a massive tour. We did 5,000 miles driving all over New Zealand, uh, especially uh, South Island, right down to the bottom, all the way back up. In fact, that um, drawing on my T-shirt is taken from a photo I took. I think I took that photo down um, at Bluff Point, right at the bottom of New Zealand, and sort of making the point that I had never been so far away from Aberystwyth. And uh, here we are, driving around Aberystwyth in that very car. So when it came to March 2020, uh, sorry, not March, no, it was January 2020, I was moving on to Australia. I did look at taking Betty with me because she's an Australian car. But uh, importing cars into Australia, um, not very easy and it would have been very costly. There's a surprising amount of sea between New Zealand and Australia. Uh, so it just wasn't going to work. And I did look at shipping her back to the UK, but at the time I couldn't afford it. It just wasn't feasible. So I had to sadly say goodbye and sell her. Now I sold her to a very pleasant chap called Tony uh, and his wife Diane. And uh, oh, hello people waving. I have no idea why they're waving at us. Um, they took Betty on. Um, they're in the video, the final Betty video of my tour of New Zealand. Uh, and the plan was they were going to have relatives come over, I think, and use Betty for their own tri trip around New Zealand. I mean, they could have just asked Betty where to go. She's been everywhere, all over the place. Uh, Covid put paid to that, so poor Betty mostly spent 2020 just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, I think she was used very sparingly, she was kept under cover, but ultimately there, there wasn't really a use for her. And uh, by the end of 2020, um, I got into the position with a channel, but I thought I can actually afford to do this. I must point out, I decided I could afford to do that before buying a house. Um, quite a lot of months before buying a house. Uh, had we had even an inkling that we might buy a house back when I bought Betty back, I might not have done it because the money would have been more useful for the house. But hey, that, that's how life panned out in the end. We weren't really intending to buy a house. We very, very, very nearly have. Uh, just to, just solicitors bouncing back and forth on that, but that's a different story entirely. It does not relate to Betty here. Just deal with this roundabout. Make sure everyone's going where they say they're going. There we go. And now we can concentrate. So I, I think it was November 2020. Um, I, I said to Tony, do you have any plans? for Betty and um, he was like well no she's probably gonna have to go and I was just like oh really 
um, because I felt in a position to buy. And, and that's down to you lot, people who watch the videos, like the videos, subscribe to the videos, uh, uh, channel members, patrons who buy stuff in the shop. Um, all of you who have helped Hubnut grow have allowed this magical moment to happen. You've helped Betty reach this country. And uh, that's pretty special. So thank you all very much. Even if you've never given Hubnut a penny, you've just watched the video, you've helped. Even the troll comments, they've helped as well. And that feels marvelous. It still stats, they still watch my video, even if they were rude about it. So marvelous, marvelous times. Well, this is fun. I've just managed to get stuck on a beach, just like we did on South Island of New Zealand. So, uh, it's going well. I did think that looked a bit rocky, and I was right. And this is where um, huge weight and rear-wheel drive and automatic and all that start falling down. So, uh, we're a bit stuck at the moment, because if I put it in reverse, we're just not going anywhere, really. I might, I might have to clear a path. Memories are made of this. Oh, we moved a bit. Oh yeah, we burnt some rubber there. I'm trying to take it forward again. Oh, well that didn't pan out quite how I expected. Um, got Betty stuck on the beach in um, the southern and northern hemispheres. So that's impressive. But what I was going to tell you on the beach, and which I failed to do because we got in such a blind panic trying to get her unstuck, is we have exciting new merchandise to um, celebrate the fact that this car is here. We, we plan this in advance. Actual planning on Hubness. We don't just have t-shirts, we have stickers and fridge magnets also um a same beautiful design by my friend graham these are only a couple of quid each t-shirts are 12 pounds available at hubnut.org uh, i'm going to end the plugging and we'll talk a bit more about what betty actually is so betty here is a 2001 ford fairmont uh, a car developed for the australian market by ford australia albeit they had to tie in with ford's global design language so there would have been serious collaboration with um, the lads back at um, Ford in Michigan, I think, uh, to ensure that the design met the needs of Ford's global family. And the result is rather odd. This was a time when Ford was very experimental. Uh, the Ford Focus Mark I, the Ford Car, and uh, the Mondeo Mark III heralded a new sort of design language for Ford. And this car jumped on the bandwagon perhaps more than any other Ford. It is... Um, unusual as is why she was called betty ugly betty because she is a little um, curious in the looks department let's pull you out of the microphone and i can show you you know this curved base of the windscreen and the curved at the top and as you walk around the car she just gets a bit weirder 
really the rear end sort of tapers down to this pointy tail the triangle the slash were very much part of this design language of the time so it's trying to use the same sort of edgy styling as the ford car on something much much bigger and uh it, it, it's a tiny little tail for a massive car but yeah I'm, I'm thrilled beyond belief to have this car here uh, it represents the sort of the beginning of the end for independent australian designs uh, there was effectively this car evolved into the later falcons ending with the xg but the um ba and bf that followed this were sort of reworked versions to look more like the later ford design language but this is my favorite i, I just think they're so unusual in terms of looks there is nothing that looks a bit like a ford fairmont au or a ford falcon indeed so the structure goes falcons were the um, lower spec models fairmonts were a bit more plush and then there were fair lanes that had a different front end longer wheelbase it's just weird holden did the same thing with commodores um, and even used the belmont name on some of them i think and uh, yeah they just came up with loads of different versions on the same platform because th there were limits to how wide a range they could really have but uh, yeah, i think the fairmont it's fair to say was probably aimed at the slightly older gentleman mine incorrectly wears gear alloys there was a fairmont gear which had independent rear suspension but uh, i must take you around the back because betty has a beam axle um, properly old-fashioned with a lovely watts linkage on it but you might just be able to see down there yeah we'll see more of that in the, the story of how she got here which is going to follow in its own separate series uh, i can't really do a short version of the effort the length we went to to get this car here because i bought betty second time around in november um having sort of sold her to tony and diane i bought her back in november um, we, we finalized the deal just before christmas and, and then betty started her journey here way back in january 2021 uh, she boarded a ship and came over and it's taken months and months to get the paperwork sorted to get her to pass the uk mot there were some issues there then we had some immobilizer issues and a huge shout out to uh, motoring box um sean for um helping us out with those we were getting really really stuck and he came up with a few simple ideas and i think that helped us actually get betty running again uh, it's a bit of a spoiler but here she is so you know we got her running again but um there will be more detail on that in the story of how she got here as well as um, my friend Rich down at Southways Automotive. He helps get her legal and did quite a lot of work in the end to Betty. So um, I must remember to pay him um, when he remembers to invoice me for the second loss of work. And uh, we'll, we'll get all that done. So check out Southways Automotive. Up and Down is his YouTube channel. It's doing amazing things with Citroen SMs and all sorts. And uh, Ivoco Vans, for reasons best known to himself. Um, but uh, yeah, it, he, he was instrumental in sorting this out and so was motoring box and if you want to really understand the history of these cars motoring box channel on youtube is where you need to look and yes um i, I will say my microphone is currently wrapped in a bit of scotch bright to act as a wind sock because i seem to have lost the fluffy in all the beach chaos earlier i think it sadly went missing and uh, we ran a mic out of battery which is why the sound cut out at the end of that clip so all, all good fun really but yeah I, I still can't quite believe it she's here and just uh, another addition to the list of increasing oddities i have in my collection i have two of these um these alt sits made in romania there's another one up the back there we've got a reliant fox daihatsu Sharad, yugo sana which is slowly getting buried the yugo's time will hopefully come took the invocar the uh, little hero of the channel the gsa is sat here and i've even got a deu matiz around here which i will be taking to festival of the unexceptional so betty will not be going to festival of the unexceptional um, we weren't sure she was actually going to be ready in time she is ready in time but i'm committed to taking myrtle the matiz so betty will star at um, the hubnut socials um, we've got one all confirmed um, up at the motorist near leeds and that's taking place on the 14th of august you'd be very welcome to attend uh, between 10 a.m and 2 p.m and uh, there's a, a video somewhere explaining more detail and the second one i'm hoping to announce very very soon but uh yeah there we go that, that's it i i have bought this car 11,000 miles just to get it stuck on a beach again just like i did 
uh, when I was in New Zealand. Sometimes, apparently, I never learn. Uh, Miss Hubnut found the incident highly hilarious, but um, I'm very glad we got her unstuck again. Just goes to show that much talk and no limited slip diff. There's, there's nothing to help me at all, apart from traction control, that just cuts the power and stops you doing anything at all. So yeah, it's been an adventure. But in future videos, we will be beautifying uh, this car. Obviously the headlamps have started going a bit. The lacquer's awful and she needs a, a good clean and good service um, inside. I haven't even showed you inside. Uh, some of you will never have seen inside a Ford Falcon or Fairmont AU. And here we go. It, it's very, very Ford. Apart from perhaps the indicators right would throw European folk. But yeah, very simple instrumentation a bit of wood because it's a fairmont and therefore it's posh digital climate control which is working perfectly a six stacker cd player and uh, detritus from our adventure this weekend we haven't even had a chance to unpack the car yet but i know i can't leave this video hanging on there's also some innovative solutions to a drooping headliner the headliner did not survive shipping so you'll, you'll find out all about this in the future videos coming on how she got here but all I can say is thank you so much for watching these videos and uh, it, it, it's your watching the videos the way subscribers and views have gone up that gave me the confidence to embark on this adventure. I saw people saying oh let's start a crowdfund to get Betty here but that doesn't seem fair really. It's, it's my car and it, it's my adventures and I'm grateful for any support you offer at all but it didn't feel right to ask people to pay for this to happen so buy a t-shirt if you like donate via the store if you like become a patron or a channel member if you like none of these things are compulsory they just help make stupid adventures like this come true and believe me there will be adventures for this car when i was driving it around new zealand i had a massive hankering to take it to norway for some reason so who knows maybe that will happen in a future video not this year i don't think but at some point so yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed all this as much as I have. And uh, yeah, there will be more on this car soon. Ta-ta for now. It's a Ford gym, but not as we know it.